who's back? Robin No Tears and Co <laughs> and Cody New Gloves. Cody New Gloves Glove Watch 2023. Uh, we did it. We got to the end of the season. We still have, I guess, a four part one on one. They don't even call it a tell all anymore because they're like, no they one's know. buying it. <laughs> Uh, season 18, episode 14, it's always darkest before dawn. Um, and we're going to be here for another, another as long as the show is going. I'm really surprised because they have it on the schedule through January, but whatever. Um, I, we'd love a catch-up season. Yeah, they just caught us right up. They went right into the next season. Um, Starting with, what's her name, Christine's Wedding, I guess? Yeah. If you want to watch our live reaction to the show... Um, you can go to our Patreon. The link is below. The ten and twenty five dollar levels allow you to watch the whole season's live reactions. Um, you can also watch this recap commercial free. That's your thing. But if you don't want to watch that, that's fine. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, and just you know, the couple of you that are idiots and are angry typing because we charge something for something, you can get a free book. Oh yeah. Let me just adjust this a little bit. Um, I have put, I have started putting my audiobooks up on YouTube, so if you, I will put it in a comment or the description, the link to the first book, which is Death on the Range, it's an archery themed murder mystery, it's sort of a novella, so it's a little shorter, but I'm going to put them all the ones that I have done up on YouTube, so if you've been thinking, gosh, I wish I could hear more of Nikki's voice, you now can. I do highly recommend, though, listening at two times speed, um, but if you just want to support me for free. Especially if you're ADD like us. Yeah. Um, and if you just want to support us and have no intention of listening to my books, just go ahead and uh, like and subscribe to that channel because I need to have a thousand likes before I can monetize it. Oh, it's a it. different channel. It's going to be on different channels. We have my, so that that'll be easy to find. Okay, so figure it out. I'm going to put the link <laughs> in the description, John. Oh, I missed link that. Link in the description, and I'll probably pin a comment. I so let's that get part. into this. I'm kind of surprised the season is over. I'm not surprised they ended with Mary being like, "I'm out." But I, it was really odd to me because I felt like they just left Janelle and Christine. They just left them they in left Utah. They left everything in the middle of a conversation. I mean, almost. Kind of. Well, I was like, look at the time as we got to the end of the episode. And I was like, are they going to drag this into next week's episode? Because it didn't feel like, it didn't feel wrapped up to me. It just felt done. And I was like, okay. But next week's episode has the host who just pats them on the back as they regurgitate garbage. You know, and I'm not. Specifically Robin and Cody. I'm not crazy about her, but I also know, but I also really believe that there's not a lot she could do differently. She's not picking the questions. She's not pulling the footage. Well, somebody with have, a brain should be doing those things. Well, TLC should come down and be like, here's the deal. One, yes, you can follow up on stuff. Two, uh, if Cody tries to not answer a question, you just need to be like, Cody, that's what we're doing. Roll here the for. footage and just show be how like, dumb okay, it is. Just like, okay, just like can uh, judge, can we declare this a hostile witness? Like that kind of thing. So we start off, it is now in October, which is seven months, roughly, she said six months, so maybe it was earlier in the month, since he announced that he was not interested. And we're just moving toward it. Now, doing the rewatch, what I realize is this is kind of on par for Mary, taking a long time to make a decision. Um, Unless it's like, you know, a wet bar, or an extra room, or stuff, stuff that she can get so Janelle's kids can't eat. So she talks about how with the first anniversary, which I think she had the first anniversary in Flagstaff, which had to have been her 30th, which is the one that all of us have been quoting as being this anniversary where he really kind of told her off. And she said her experience of it was that he asked her to go to the Grand Canyon. He told her how he's ready to start anew. How he wants her to pay for the, what is, what's this place called? Coyote Pass. Coyote Pass off. No, but like. And they can start anew. That they were going to new beginnings, all of that. But then what we saw on that footage was him saying that he was not feeling that way. So that's a little confusing. And then now she said at, at year 32 uh, that he's not interested in becoming a couple anymore. That he's it's broken. It's, it's this emotional. She also throughout the episode sprinkles in. It's been like this for 10 yeah. or 12 years Way well, before the catfishing. Well before the catfishing incident, which I'm glad that she has explicitly said the viewers have done the math and figured it out. Not like we didn't know, but also we were right. Yeah, I mean, but that really needs to be drilled in at the... At the it really needs to be our new shirt. What? Well, well before, before the, the catfishing. catfishing. 
Okay, well, let me write that down. Well before the catfishing. Um, and we've said it a million times. We don't need to reiterate it. I'm just so glad to hear it. And I bet you I won't be surprised at the, well, I won't be surprised if nothing is covered at the one-on-ones. But that would be something that I would cover at the one-on-ones. Be like, Mary says you abandoned her well before the catfishing. And him be like, no. And then have Robin come in and be like, they had a beautiful relationship. It was so intimate and amazing and special so, and spiritual. So, so how much time were they spending, you know, boffing? So what we need to know, yeah, so that was one of the things that we came up with during the rewatch is Mary keeps talking, when we're doing the rewatch, which is available on Thursdays or two weeks early on our Patreon, but um, during the rewatch is Mary kept talking about, I really wish this could happen naturally. I really wish this could happen naturally. And all of a sudden, about halfway through the storyline, we went, oh, she's asking for more sex. Cody has stopped having sex with her, and she is just sort of subtly hinting to him that... If they maybe if they just started having sex again, it would happen. I mean, I don't know why this drives me nuts in this family is that nobody seems to talk about stuff. Although I I really shouldn't blame them because Christine talked about her feelings for years and they labeled her a, a complaining harpy. So I don't know that it would have made any difference. But now what is happening though is Mary is saying about a month ago he said that he didn't consider himself married to me. And that would have been at the tell-all. So oh, this is October, ago. and I guess in, I can't remember when the tell-all was filmed. I guess it was September. They did the tell-all for season 17. And in that tell-all, she saw the footage where he said, I don't consider myself married to Mary anymore. Um, which is another reason I hate these hugely over... Here we are at the end of 18, and she's just finding out what happens in 17. And that's just, it just, it's... It's becoming a historical documentary at this point. <laughs> you know, like, we're, we're having people go like, well, 20 years ago, this is what I think I remember happening. It's ridiculous. But um, she has now seen that. And what's crazy is Robin's trying to act this whole time to this whole thing like, but you guys can still harness. Robin saw how Cody talked about her at the tell-all and is still just wanting to drag Mary through this. Yeah, but he shuts her down and says what he wants, right? No, she she takes his. No, the 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 man ain't manning. Um. And then oh, what was I gonna say about a month ago? He was he had married? Is it the tell all? Robin saw the tell all too. I know. I did. Okay. So anyway, Janelle kind of says at some point, "Hey, I know that Mary's really loyal." As far as I'm concerned, I know people are saying like Janelle and Christine have done should be, like, there for Mary. Well, first of all, I don't know that Mary would be there. For, she, Mary was not there for either of them. Just well, she to be invited clear. them over for Christmas Eve, right? No. Like everybody? No. Oh. No one got invited over for Christmas Eve. No, but my point is that I understand why Mary doesn't want to be around Christine and Janelle. I understand why Janelle and Christine, Christine don't want to be around Mary. And I think maybe we should just keep our noses out of it. But I, every single time they ask about Mary, I feel that Janelle and Christine are extremely generous in their answers in terms of saying, they don't say things like, they don't bring up the catfishing. They don't bring up, you know... Uh, they, they do still keep asking her if she's going to move to Flagstaff with them. Oh, wait. That was a long time ago. They have let that go. But Janelle goes, you know, she's really loyal, but I can't, I, you know, isn't this hurting her emotionally? I mean, I kind of feel like they've really been like, yeah, she's been royally screwed over. I get a lot of people want them to, like, make up and side together against Cody, but I just, one, I kind of go, let's go rewatch season 17. She chose see. sides, and, she, and Mary chose the wrong sides. Well, and the thing about it is, let's go back and listen to how Mary talked about Christine when Christine was leaving. It was not particularly flattering. Now, I don't blame Mary for that, but I also don't blame Christine and Janelle for deciding that now's a good time to get their distance. Um... It did not go well. And then Christine's flat out like, he is disgusting to Mary. 100% true. Disgusted and by Mary? Disgusting to Mary. Like, his behavior is disgusting. Oh, okay, yeah. The way that he treats um, yes. Mary is disgusting. And it's even worse for Robin to be like, hold on, hold on, hold on with me. Let the girl go. And I was like, man, Christine is really... We talk about, in a lot of reality shows, there's usually a narrator for the season. Like in competitive reality shows, there's someone who, like, they get into the interview and they tell you exactly how it is. That's been Christine, and I know it annoys it's some of you. It's kind of like how Cody has a narrator to his life, 
And that's Robin whispering in his ears. Right. And how Cody also has been rewriting his history. And he's like, whatever I feel like today is what happened. But what I appreciate is he that... He gets creative. Finally, someone is telling the truth. Now, I wish all the best for Mary, but she is still... It's, it's a little infuriating to listen to the way she's talking. I'm hoping... Tons of people are like, no, no, she's just not saying too much because she's going to get a lawyer. She's not going to let this go. I hope that's oh, the case. Oh, man. Can we see that on film, please? I would love that to be a case. I'm just saying as of right now, based on what she's saying, it doesn't, doesn't look great. So then we cut away from this situation, which hasn't really started yet, to Idaho, where Janelle and Christine still are. We, they're doing a hike with, her, with Christine's family. We get a little bit of information, new information we didn't hear, like that Janelle went back to school when Logan was young, and that she basically said she did it alone. Because she said Cody was never around. She'd get all the kids into bed and then she'd study at night, which is super impressive. And I appreciate how Christine is like, I can't believe that you did that. Like, that's really impressive. I do I mean, think it is. studying at night or and getting all the things into bed. Either one of those is right. impressive. <laughs> one or the other is almost impossible. <laughs> Takes two of us. And then both. Wow. You know, that she did both. I, and I, I can barely keep... So we after I put my son to bed... We're lucky right now after the time change to oh. get a half an hour out of me before Man, I we hate absolutely the time change. crash. Last night was such was so difficult for me, um, and the show's on at eight o'clock for us. And I'm like, oh, is it? Can we go to bed yet? And John's like, okay, you can go to bed. And then I just crash. So the idea that she worked a full time job, came home, got her kids into bed, and then studied is unbelievable to me. So she neglected Cody. Oh, oh, gosh. And I'm, you know, Cody was <laughs> To be neglected, he'd have to be there. Um, I bet, And I bet you, I bet you on the nights he was there... He wasn't there. He he was absolutely like, well, you can't... On the nights he was there, he was with Robin. Well, no, this is, this is long before. Okay. My point, though, is I bet you even when he was there, he was like, okay, Janelle, so do, are we going to have our time together or not? And she had to s skip studying for those nights. Um, and then Christine talks about how in the AUB, there was a lot of pressure not to go to college. She said it was mostly on the women, but I just saw a creator this morning on, on TikTok who was also part of the AUB at the same time period. And he said he also, as a, he was in college, and he also got a lot of pressure not to do it, that it was a waste of time because the, the end times were coming. Um, oh, yeah, that's what they said. I still hear that from people. I mean... That's not a new thing, and it's still a thing. Um, and he was and saying... it's not exclusive to Mormon. He was saying... Or it's, AUB, or whatever they called themselves yeah. at the time. He was saying that it, it might have been worse for women. He doesn't know because he wasn't one, but he definitely experienced it as well. And that Christine's dad sat, sat her down and was like, Chris, Christine, that's not true. Go to college. Um, I don't know if she graduated, but then they talked a little bit about their food story. It sound like she did. I'm pretty sure they said she did. That's well, it made it sound like she did, but I didn't know that she if she graduated or not because I wasn't the impression she had uh, graduated. Fair enough. I don't know. Um, I don't know. So they're talking about maybe we're getting all the kids into one space, and they explicitly once again iterate that the kids miss Robin's kids, the boys especially, because you know um, Janelle has mostly boys. She said especially the boys miss Dayton. And I hope, I mean, like, I'm going to be very earnest here for a second, which is I hope that Robin's kids hear that. Because however I feel about some of the snotty stuff that has been said by them, they, they don't they deserve... They have been brainwashed for most of their lives at this point. They don't deserve to go through their life thinking that the whole family hated them. Whatever issues that the family has had with Robin, with which are Robin well deserved... And Cody. And Cody... I have not heard any of the kids. Now, when they were really young, there was a couple things said about Brianna crying a lot or the kids not integrating as enough. But over the last, like, six seasons, when things have gotten bad, I haven't heard any of the kids say anything bad about, the, about Robin's kids. Um, truly missed Robin's two youngest so much and begged to see them and cried to see them. And I've heard Gwen, I've heard Peyton, I've heard Gabe Garrison, um, all of them. I don't think Isabel has said anything, but Isabel still sees them. But virtually everybody who's not currently, and I don't know anything she from the She sees them, but she doesn't get chicken. Right. <laughs> Which is funny, someone pointed out apparently Truly is a vegetarian. So they had chicken for dinner, 
and she doesn't for her birthday for her birthday wow what great parents i didn't know that and i don't know if that's something recent or not but it would it kind of was like wow that actually would make it significantly worse but um I, I, I'm just being 100% earnest with here, which is like, th we all have enough stuff through life that tends us to therapy, that they shouldn't be going to therapy for stuff that didn't exist, exist, like all of my siblings hated us. Not a single one of them has said anything critical in the past eight years. They said stuff when they were kids, but when they were kids, they all treated, they were all being treated like siblings, and they said sibling stuff. The kind of way you'd say, like my, the way that your sister still says that you're kind of a butthead. I am. His sister, his sister came and visited, and we we talked, and she's like, "Oh man, he really married up," which I do not believe. I believe I'm so lucky to have him. We'll let her believe that. But but his adult sister still kind of calls him like a rolls her eyes at him all the time, and sometimes when we talk, and I'll say something that her she goes, "Oh, that sounds so much like my brother." Jeez, I don't know how you put up with him. Like that is totally. <laughs> That is totally. Maybe I don't want you hanging out with her. <laughs> that's totally normal sibling stuff. So they, when they were younger and there was a, they were better. They did totally normal sibling stuff. I've not heard them say. I, and in fact, I've heard more critical stuff from specifically Brianna than I have heard from any of the other kids. Um, I'm giving her. I'm, well, she's underage, so it's like you know. And I said plenty of dumb she's stuff. She's underage. My she's probably got a thing like ADHD or oh, I think. something. I, all I'm saying like, is... Pretty sure they all do. I hope that the kids hear that. And I hope that they have someone in their life who goes, you know, your family says they misses you. Like, I know you... I know there's a lot of... Words is hard. Sorry, did I, did I, did I not say anything that... They misses sense? you. They misses you. Your family <laughs> misses you. Like, the, the they've specifically said they miss you, that they wish they could see you. You know, I don't know that whatever your mom and dad are telling you is, is accurate. Juxtapose that with, uh, you know, Cody missing Mary, right? Right. Okay. So then we go back to Coyote Pass. Robin comes, oh, Mary comes no. down. We got to do no, this, this in this order. Starts. Okay. This starts. Who pulls up first? Cody and his four-wheeler. Uh, that or Mary, we don't really know. But Cody comes in before Robin for oh, sure. Oh, yeah. On his... On his Thousand cc, very nice, extra seat in back with a back. F fancy rest. shocks. With yeah, very rear view mirrors. Uh, we say I'm just this. saying it's not the bottom line, and there is not a speck of dirt on the thing. With his fancy new gloves, I would. We were joking, so we like we said we've lived on a ranch. We currently have a four wheeler that we use to get around our property here. It's got like seat tape on it to keep the seat together no rear view mirror not that fancy that is ex that is somewhat expensive um what the one model that he has and i was laughing because i'm like he'd wear gloves to protect his precious hands from the the the, the grip and they're like brand spanking new and i have the same pair of gloves that i've had been working with with the horses for nine years and there's like all the like that's those are what work gloves look like so they show up separately i guess based on context they were meeting to talk about the property but because they talk about the property first and then mary goes no I didn't... no no first robin doesn't robin say something or does cody go we should walk around the property first thing he says is we should walk around the property okay and mary and robert are like hold on we skipped a whole bunch of stuff um and then it sounds like it was a surprise to Mary that Christine had so had written her property over to Cody. And what Christine says, though, is, you know, Robin was also on her piece. So if anything had happened, Robin would get a piece, Cody would get a piece, and Christine would be a piece. I want to remind you of something, that Robin and Cody are married. And I don't think they've done anything to try legally to separate. Married. Legally married. They've done nothing to separate not, their assets. Not just like their BS vows with the other wives who that didn't count for Which nothing. Which means that she has a claim to all of all of the property because her name's on all of them. Although I'll be it'll be interesting to see if they are allowed to subdivide, does he keep her name on on all of the pieces or does he try to take her off? Like will she be on his pieces of property? But anyway, we get into she's like, so what happened to Christine? She's like, well, we're still gonna divide in five lots. And then she's like, well, what about the extra lots? Like, that'll still be mine. So they never really discuss the fact so that what he's saying he is has he'll have two lots. Four acres on his name alone, right? That's right. what we were told. And then Robin, Robin already has four, four acres. acres on her name alone. Janelle will have four acres and Mary will have two. And as near as I can tell, Janelle is a fan of it being divided equally. And she's like, 
I've said before that we we need to get an assessment of the property, which is smart because it's not it's not like an ounce of gold where an ounce of gold is worth an ounce of gold is worth an ounce of gold. Four acres could be worth more, twice as much as two acres, or it could be worth less if certain parts of the property have easements on them or building restrictions or um you know like they were saying at one point they were saying the trees were more valuable which to me is absolutely i do not want a piece of property that's just flat with no trees on it um it feels when we were looking at property we saw property that that if it had trees on it it felt three times larger than than a property that was half uh twice as big with no trees on it because you could see right into your neighbors even like 20 acres you could see it just felt really naked it felt very uncozy to us but we're big tree people who knew? But anyway, um, so um, Janelle's saying we need to do an assessment and divide it evenly. And Cody's like, well, you get your four acres regardless. To me, seems to be implying that she it matters to her that Mary's not getting an even, even shape. And they go into this whole thing. So she's like, well, I thought maybe because I could get the two extra acres so that I could have it. And they're like, no, no, no. And then Robin jumps in and is like, I don't know why people think that everything that's Cody's is mine and that we share the same opinion. And it's like, well, we're going to see why they think you share an opinion There's here in a few minutes. There's not one brain between both of them. And she legally does own everything, part of everything that he owns. And not once in this entire conversation do they mention the, the, the large house with the multiple acreage that they own. The other four acres. The other own. four acres they own and the house. So Christine's house, she had to swap property out because it was partially Cody's, even though she does explain, well, we'll get to that in a second, but she does explain that she's made all the payments on it herself. Um, but nobody wants, when they're talking about family assets, talks about the fact that Cody and Robin, from what I understand, that house that they own is worth more than all of Coyote Pass. So as far as I'm concerned, if you're doing it fairly, then, they get to keep that, and the, all the property should go to Janelle, her name only, and Mary, her name only. Or mortgage it again and pay Mary out for the house that she owns, should own part of, which is right. Robin and Cody. Yeah, because both Janelle, I mean, it, if you want to make a case for how they've been screwed over, it's really easy with the fact that Janelle and Mary's money went into the house that Cody and Robin now live in. Now... This is my opinion. This is my core opinion, which is that Christine was still screwed. She was lucky to get any money out, but Robin and, and Cody have drained assets from her. But who got screwed the most are Janelle and Chris, uh, and um, Mary, who have zero assets in their name that should have been other than this property, which he is now trying to pull away from Mary. Um, and absolutely, it more than anything else infuriates me because it's just a black and white issue. So we can't go back in time and fix that Cody didn't spend time with Janelle, Christine, or Mary's family. We can't fix that. But what we can look at are numbers. And that's why I was like, if TLC ever wants to wring the last bit of um, viewership of viewership out of this show, whenever the ratings start dropping again, they need to do like... They Forensic need to, accounting. Yeah, they need to do an audit. They need to do like a, a full, you know, those cult specials that are so popular on like Netflix. They need to do one of those. That's just like the sister wives money, a deep dive financial audit into Oops. how Cody and Robin have stolen everything. Hosted by Leanne Remini. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we really enjoyed, uh, uh, was it, Le it's not Leanne Remini. It's a uh, Leah. I don't know. Oh my gosh. No, Leanne Remini is the, no, that is right. I'm getting her mixed up with Leanne Rhymes. Leanne Remini. The Scientology lady, um, or the ex-Scientology lady. anti. She was so great, and I could see her in there with her Jersey accent, just chewing Cody up one side and down the other. Uh, for a second, I thought you said Leanne. I was thinking of Leanne Rhymes. Well, you'd be wrong. And I was, I was wrong. I was wrong. Do you want that on a, on a stamp? So she goes, okay, so this is my example of how Cody's like, I'm the man. And we're like, oh, no, you aren't, honey. Because, um... Robin is like, well, what if Cody and I break up? Then I need my own assets and my own name. And it's like, lady, you've been divorced before. As opposed before. to the other four acres with their house on it. Yeah, it's like, lady, you've been divorced before. You know exactly how that works. Everything Cody's name on, unless they've done some heavy-duty work to protect it and keep it separate, which they have not, 
Um, all of that stuff is going to be up, up for... And, of course, if he passes, she now owns everything he does and half half of all the lots that are with the other wives. I'm just telling you, Cody, you better keep an eye on any food that starts tasting <laughs> funny. Don't get near cliffs. Don't take up any... I'd watch out for some of those guns. I mean, I'd be... I mean, if I was him... So she's like, well, what if we divorce? And he just looks sick. And then he goes, she goes, well, my thing is that my lot will be passed on to the kids. And that's what you're thinking too, right, Cody? And Cody's like, not really. And she's like, no. And he's like, actually. And she's like, no, no, no. I don't want you to talk. Definitely don't open don't your talk. mouth anymore. You're, you're in a bad place. We can't hear what you say. Don't say anything. And he just shuts his pretty little mouth and doesn't say a thing. And it's like, don't tell me for one second. Who made up the COVID rules again? Yeah. I wonder who made up the COVID rules. I mean, rules. the bull crap excuse. That changed all the time. Because there were no COVID and rules. And he never gave her the list of the rules and all that. But I want to tell you, every time he starts to pull out that, I'm a man. I need my wife to respect him. They should force him to watch that clip of her just shutting him down. And he doesn't argue. He doesn't complain. I mean, he, he complains in the interview later, but not right then. She cuts him off. And so a good question for you is what was he going to say? One, I think it's very likely is that he's, he's going to cut all his kids out of the will. He's not going to leave them anything. Two, that this is not about um, that he plans on uh, developing, which I've been saying for a while, develop those and eventually sell them for his retirement or be a landlord or something. But whatever it was, Slum, Robin didn't want him to say it and she shut him down and he didn't say it and he didn't even look at her sideways when she did that. Um, and so anyway, so she's like, so I don't get those two acres. And he said, no. And she's like, okay, I understand. And then in an interview, she's like, I understand exactly what it is. You know, I don't get anything because now I'm not a real wife, even though I've been paying in. And uh, I, that pissed Welcome me to off. the club of stuff we've said for like forever. Yeah. Well, the way she just stopped and that was the end of it. Now, a lot of people have told me. In our, in our watch live with us, it's already up online, so I'm already hearing back from the Patreon people. Um, a lot of people are like, you know, just because she didn't say anything then doesn't mean she's not going to get a lawyer and fight it. And I'm like, hey, if that happens, I will Just be, make sure it's on camera. I will be at the front with like a little flag waving that says, go, Mary, go. I'm just saying it was very unsatisfying as a TV show to just drop it. So then we go back up to you, to Idaho for, I think this is the last we see of them. It was so weird that they just ended it there for me. They go back up to Idaho. They play some sort of ultimate Frisbee game, wasting time. I'm like, get to, get to the dirt. So the brothers sit her down and say, okay, so tell us why you left. And of course, Cody's like, I used to consider them friends, but I guess not anymore. And I'm like, yeah, you screwed over their sister. I doubt, I mean... I would hope that they would be a little bit, especially if they saw any of the show, they'd be a little bit like, Chrissy, come on, come, come on, let's, let's get this going. So they asked yes. basically why she left, and she's like, we just cut right to it. And he said he wasn't attracted to me, and I wasn't nice to the sister wife. Well, sister which wives. means I wasn't nice to Robin. Right, and so like Janelle and Christine give this look, which is like, now he's saying he cares how they treat Mary, but he did not say that in season 17 or 16 or 15 or 14 or 13 or 12. Or 11, okay. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, He 5, never 4, 3, cared 2, 1. how they treated Mary. Ever. It was like, he was just like, hey, well, not mean, my they deal. They were the one at that Christmas that didn't get her any gifts, right? Right. Well, then they oh, didn't Oh, no, no. That was, that was Cody who didn't give Mary any gifts for Christmas and got Christine a ton. And they're, they're obviously the and ones... And she's like, what the F? Right? Well, not just that. It's like even the past year after... She's like, hang on with me, Mary. Just, we have to hold the family together. Not inviting her to Easter. Not inviting her to Truly's birthday party. Um, now, she also wasn't invited to Avalon's birthday party to second Christmas. Um, but But... There sure were an awful lot of real tears that dropped, right? But my, but apparently McKelty didn't invite her, but I've, I've gone over that a million times already, so I won't rehash my feelings on that. Um, but uh, I lost my place here. Oh, and so, yeah, so Ro Christine and, and Janelle exchange this look, and they're like, when they say not treating her well, they mean Robin. And then Janelle's like, you know what? I heard all these stories about how awful Christine was to Robin, and frankly, I'm not believing any of them now. Because now we're, and I think Janelle is, it's especially true because Janelle heard how 
awful she was to Robin about them buying the house. And Christy, uh, Janelle's like, that's not what happened either. It's like, it becomes really apparent when someone is a habitual liar and makes himself the victim in every situation. All of a sudden you notice like, wait, I was there. And that's not what happened. Wait, I, I, now you're saying that I said this? That's not what happened either. It's like, at least the nice thing about a liar is if you're, if you hang around them long enough, they out themselves to everyone. Then they got to go find a new, new, although Cody's buying a hook, line, and sinker because he is dumb. Um, and then she says the bit about how Cody's never loved her and the, the brother's like, I don't think that's true. And I don't think that's true either. He said plenty of nice things about her in the early seasons. And now he's trying to repaint it. We've already saw a hint in the tell-all or the one-on-ones about how he never loved Mary. And I'm just not, bu I'm just not buying it. I'm just not, it's really convenient to say now. Um, I'm sure that his feelings about Robin are so different than how he ever felt about Mary that it's easy to say he never loved him. But I it's mean, like, we're smelling what he's farting, but we ain't going to eat an ish sandwich. Um, and so, and then she's explaining about the house, which we hadn't really heard, which, which house? is the house that she had in Flagstaff, okay. which her and Cody bought together. And she was so excited that they finally had Christine. something in her name. Sorry. Uh, yes. Christine and Cody bought together. Okay was finally in the house, and then they refinanced it to take his name off so he could buy the house with, with Robin. And then he jumps in, and he's like, that had nothing to do with the divorce. The divorce came out of nowhere. I was totally blindsided. And it's like, buddy, we saw season 16 and 17 where he constantly complained about how Christine has been complaining about this stuff forever. It's been going on forever. Um, her, his own kid said she's been unhappy for a long time, and he yelled at her for that. Like, you can't... This is what drives me crazy is that he thinks we're as stupid as he is because he just every episode has a different story about how he's the victim. He was so blindsided and all that, but he doesn't remember we were there for a lot of it and we heard what he said before. So now he's saying it had nothing to do with the divorce. It blindsided him out of nowhere. And it's like, well, buddy, sure. then how, if it blindsided sure. you out of nowhere, then how can you say what did and didn't contribute to it? You know what I mean? You said it came out of nowhere. Okay, so you think she just woke up randomly one day and was like, <coughs> oh no, I think I'm catching a case of divorcing Cody. <laughs> oh no, quick, quick, give me the vaccine. It's too late. <laughs> it's already infecting everyone. Next thing you know, she cough coughs on Janelle. Janelle's leaving. Mary has had a long terminal case of leaving the Cody's. Oh, you shouldn't make fun because Cody and... Robin almost died of COVID, even though they weren't admitted to the hospital because they weren't sick enough. Right. Yeah, I mean, they didn't even, they didn't even, they didn't even assess him. Which is what the nanny his, and the kids do. Not the other kids that his, he would have cut out of everything for life, but one of Robin's kids brought COVID. Um, yes. And, and the nanny and exposed was, them all to COVID. Yes. Um, so then... But I'll just sip my tea... And then Christine's like, you know, I think this is, she's like, it ended up working out well because I had some assets to leave with. And I, she wonders if Janelle isn't sort of playing this safe game until she has money, which is fair. I mean, if that is what her and Mary are doing, more power to them. I will absolutely, absolutely be there front row cheering them on. Um, it's just infuriating to watch in the meantime. Um... What is that? It says not in a ahoy and a date. Ships ahoy. I don't know. Anyway, so she... Um, Moving on. I can't even read any of this. No kidding. Should have been a doctor. So they mentioned that Cody is on every property. and They're not sure if they know that. Oh, and then she said after she asked, okay, so Christine said after she asked Cody to leave and she felt really fine. Now, one of the things that is not being mentioned was mentioned, I swear it was in an article about how Isabel was the breaking point for her. It was an article, I think, that that appeared last season in season 17. Um, during the course of season 17 that Isabel, somebody pointed out to me in the, in the comments, so thank you, whoever it was, who said, you know, maybe Christine's not mentioning Isabel's surgery because she doesn't want Isabel to feel guilty. And I was like... I absolutely could see that. I could see that being like Isabel crying or someone else saying, someone saying, you know, Isabel feels bad because she feels like if she hadn't been sick, maybe you and dad would still be together. And I could see it, um, Christine saying, nope, that's not the case. I absolutely would have left anyway. I bet you she even addresses it at the tell-all. But I could see her saying, and I will never say it again because she only sticks to things now that happen between her and Cody. 
And same with Janelle. Janelle sticks to stuff that are in Cody. But I think it's unfair to assume that um, that the way their kids were treated wasn't a huge issue. They just don't want... Gabe and Garrison they already have this... make sure they, do, they don't put any of that on yeah. the kids. You know what... It's not their fault that their dad is a deadbeat. You, you know what therapists do not recommend? Bringing your, dragging your kids into the divorce. Now, it's on national TV, so they've all been dragged in a little bit. But the point is that you want to constantly reiterate that if it hadn't been for Isabel's surgery, uh, their dad would still be together. Which is, I don't, I mean, I don't for a second believe. It, they might have lasted another six months, but, or even a year, but I really don't think it would have gone on much longer. Same with Janelle. If it wasn't for her boys, I, I think, you know, if he still had a great relationship with her boys, I think it would have lasted longer. But I think she's just outgrown him. She just doesn't have an interest in, and she definitely... I definitely think that if Christine left, Jan it was inevitable that Janelle leaves because he is such a big, huge baby about all this. And him and Robin are sitting around boohooing, and Janelle has no patience for it. She's like, this has nothing to do with me. We spent our entire adult life, now almost 30 years together, talking about keeping these things separate. I don't want to sit around and just bash Christine, first of all, but then also just be have a pity party for how difficult it is for him. And then especially when she's experiencing the same thing and she's like, they're right. This preference towards Robin is absolutely a thing. So I don't know what my other notes say. It's almost like we've known that for a while. Ever. Maybe I'll remember what that says. Um, so so anyway, they cut back to... That's the end. That's the end of what we see Cody and Robin... I mean, sorry. This is the end of what we see of um, Janelle and Christine other than interviews. They just, they're just in Utah and we end the season there. I guess maybe they live there now. And I mean, I know that they come home, but it's just ridiculous. I was just, it was so weirded out by that. So that's the end of them other than we see them a lot in interviews. So Mary's like, I guess I might as well say this now. I wasn't planning on, which makes me think then why did they bother coming to Coyote Pass just to, to walk the property? She's like, I'm at the B&B &B and it needs me. Just like it, it was so frustrating to me because it really felt like she was asked telling her parents that it was like so. She was asking for permission to leave, and it's like and it why don't you dumb. just? It was really dumb. The fact that she feels that she needs to. It would have been so. And satisfying then she says she was just like, you know what? Okay, I'm getting the two acres. Well, also I'm I'm going to Utah, and you'll be hearing from my lawyer. Bye. I'm gonna sell, oh my gosh! I'm gonna sell my piece right in the middle of everybody else. Yeah. But she's like, but, I'm gonna go. Yeah. I'm not gonna renew my lease. I'm gonna go to Utah, but I still plan on building here. And I was like, oh. that is the least satisfying way to do that. Definitely now. build around where nobody likes you. Yeah. Or wants you. With with your ex husband's name on the property. Yeah, I'm absolutely sure it's gonna go great if you ever need that money back. So that was super frustrating. Um, and then they get into this whole thing where it was so weird because Mary seemed too scared just to say what he has said. May, Robin is trying to translate what Mary is saying to Cody and what Cody is saying to Mary. And she's not... I mean, everybody there just wanted... Like, and then Cody, Cody... Cody and Mary both wanted to tell her to shut up. Cody is performing for Robin while trying to get Mary to leave. He wants to divide the assets. He wants to keep the property and money. He doesn't and give, want to divide the No, and he wants to give Mary all the blame. That's how he wants to, div that's how he wants to divide okay. the assets. He keeps the stuff, <laughs> and she gets the blame, and then they peacefully walk away. That is what he is hoping for. Mary... I know I'm being tough on her. I'm just saying that I wish she... Now, maybe she said, I still plan on building here so that he doesn't rip away her property. Although, I don't think they can subdivide the property without every single person on every single piece of property signing off on it. So, they do have... her. Mary and Janelle have some leverage. I'm hoping in the next season, a little tiny bit. Now, what we do know is that of April or May of 2023... Mary and Cody were spotted moving her to Utah. And so what happened was um, they were moving. There was a moving van. Cody and Mary stopped at some, some rest stop in Utah, which is directly between Flagstaff and this. And somebody who is a big fan of the show, her husband worked there. 
And so they, they said, hey, can I take a picture for my wife? They take a picture of Mary and Cody. And they look ecstatic, like absolutely joyful. The girl posts it on Reddit. And of course, everybody goes, oh, I know exactly where that truck stop is and all of that. And she's like, oh, I didn't mean to out publicly to a, a Reddit of 100,000 people where my husband works. So she took the picture down. So I can't share the picture. But... That gives us the timeline of when Mary actually moves and the fact that Cody helps move her. So and what blackmail do you think she had on him? Well, my thing is, I bet you she does not push any financial or Coyote Pass issues, at least until May. Now, it's possible after she moves and after she sees this season, she lawyers up and does something, but I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. Or anytime soon, we won't see the next season until next year. But we will see. I am knocking on wood here that Mary takes him to the cleaners and Janelle takes him to the cleaners once they're in a place where they, they can assess the assets or something. That would be nice. So we'll probably see that in 2030. But here's what we know. Cody and, and Mary had a conversation. He pretty much laid it out that they were divorced, but he did not want to do it on camera, which is so sneaky, snaky of him. And so, so Christine had to have virtually every conversation with Cody on camera. Janelle has had virtually every conversation with Cody on camera. But Mary, when he wants to give her bad news, he wants to hide it. And Mary is like, it deserves to be in public, and Robin needs to hear it. I saw a lot of people saying, like, oh, Mary's figured out Robin's deal. I'm not convinced about that. We haven't seen that yet. I haven't, I haven't seen that on camera yet. Um, so, so she's like talking he's like well you're blaming me and she's like i don't understand what i'm blaming you for he's like well you're saying what i said and did it's like yes that is how life works that when people say and do wow. stuff we make our decisions based on those things and then robin like jumps in and she's not blaming you she's just saying and then mary is like hold on can i talk and 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 robin's like oh i was just trying to help i'm just i'll just shut up and i'm like yeah you should shut up when people have been married 32 years have to con you know are breaking up their marriage your biggest concern shouldn't be how does robin feel well and robin's going oh, that is the so only sad. concern that robin has for has anything ever had has ever had is how it feels her so then so she um, pokes herself in the eye and still doesn't tear up and then cody's kind of like i know that you really care about this robin and he in the interview says you know robin doesn't really, basically what he said is, Robin doesn't care how I feel, she just wants what she wants. I mean, basically, I'm like, hey, you know, every once in a while a squirrel finds a nut, and there's Cody with, like, the absolute a gem of the of season. Truth. And I would like that to play every time Christine or Janelle say something, and he goes, they're just making it up. I want them to play that and be like, I don't know, it sounds like you agree that Robin makes everything about her and doesn't care about anybody else as long as she gets her feelings, what she feels is right. Because that is exactly what happened. And um, and then he's like, he does this whole thing about, was this when they were talking about how she, he had to prompt, and he admits that he hasn't been married to, to Mary for like 10 years, um, eight. He says eight at one point, he says seven at one point. But I think in both cases that predates. I think in both cases what he means is 10. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, I, I mean, I definitely believe that he abandoned her long before the catfishing thing. And that's why she was so, and he was just occasionally spending the night at her house, maybe when he wanted to get away from the kids. Um, he was spending the night at her house, but I doubt they, well, I know, we know that they weren't intimate. Um, I mean, John. Anyway, we do we, know If that. we all have to think about Cody being intimate. I don't think he had the, I don't know that he had the ability to say intimate with four women. I'm just going to say it. I just think that was beyond his scope of ability. So at, at some point in here, I can't remember if it's before or after Robin runs off. They talk about the fact that... Oh, yeah, Robin runs off. Robin's like, I can't sit here. <laughs> and she, like, runs off. And I'm, I'm thinking that she thought that maybe... So to, one or both. Mary or, or, and or Cody would run off and she could end this conversation. Um, because her, them and Mary and Cody just kind of sit there, and then eventually she comes back and she's like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm just so upset. I'm sure she's used to getting her way when that happens, but that is just not how it's going to be. Um, and at some point they talk about he turns to, to at some point in this conversation, I, can't, I think I'm getting this out of order, he tells Ma Robin that he promised Robin 
in their sacred covenant that if he was no longer in love with her, he wouldn't just stay and pretend. But that's not something he promised anyone else. And there's been a lot of, that was in the sneak peeks, there's been a lot of guessing about when this promise was made. And if it was made specifically because he was already out of love with his existing wives. Um, and so was this at their initial spiritual marriage? Was he already out of love with Mary then? Let's just say it was. Was it during their legal marriage? Um, was it specifically in response to the existing wives? Because I do think it's possible that it's just one of those things that they knew enough couples that you're going to say it's specific to this situation. Let's say that. Um, I don't buy that he never loved Mary. No. I would absolutely believe, though, that he traded Robin in as a replacement for Mary. And that he just gave Mary whatever he wanted. she wanted because it was easier. So Robin runs off and then Robin comes back and all that. And Cody's like, acting is easy. I can continue to pretend to be your husband. And both Mary and John and I were like, what are you talking about, buddy? You haven't pretended to be her, her husband in years. I mean, we saw it really early on. A lot of people a early de on said, or better. as soon as she decided she wasn't going to do the surrogacy thing, she was out the door. I don't think it was just, I don't think he was all in and with the surrogacy either. I think it was, though, I think he was already done with her, but he was a little open to having more kids. Um, although I still kind of feel like a lot of that was just... Performative. Performative or whatever. Um, but then we get a really visible view of Robin rubbing her eyes with a gigantic diamond. At that, at, in the, the video, she was wearing it on her right middle finger. I guess during the upcoming one-on-one, -on -one, she's wearing it on her wedding ring. But we know what it is. A gigantic diamond solitaire with, like, stuff around it. And she's very visibly... It, they did not wear as much jewelry as they normally do. When Whose they money do there. you think that was? We know whose money it is. Not Cody and Robbins. Because yeah. they are absolutely blowing through it. And then Glove Watch 2023. Because then he's got his gloves on. Because he's so cold. Um, They're black with like red on them. Yeah. And completely clean. I don't know what he just says. I'm trying to be there for Mary. Oh, she comes back and stuff. Um, and yeah, then, so Robin, oh, I'm trying to be there for Mary. Poke, poke, poke. No tears. No tears. Her face isn't even really turning red. I'm just not. She's, I mean, she's trying hard to cry. So, um, and she's like, he hasn't been acting for eight to ten years. Um, and she's like, I know that you don't consider yourself married. And that's, okay, this is when they say it. And Robin's like, that's not true. And um, we, we've discussed that. And <clears throat> Mary's like, okay, well... Well, you, you didn't might drill it into Cody enough because he's still not saying it. Yeah, you might consider us still married, but Cody does not. And um, and then Mary's like, our situation won't change. And she's like, do you promise? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I, I, it's not going to change. Robin's still never going to call, and Mary might once in a while. Yeah, unless it's for money. We need money to pay off Coyote Pass. Um, and Mary has to comfort Robin... And it's just like, don't even tell me. I don't know how anybody can believe that Robin is the victim here when Mary is getting dumped. I don't know with how nothing. Robin can believe Robin. Oh, she is, is so the deep. Here, but she, yeah. So they admit it's finally the end. It's done. Cody immediately hops on his four wheeler and makes what? a dust cloud out of there. Mary gets in her car and leaves. And Robin sits there, I want to sit on a porch with my sister wives. She has not sat on a porch with her sister wives in all of the 12 years the show has been going she on. She's never years. acted or had sister wives because she chose not to. I'm just, I'm, we're so in love with this property. They do all these flashbacks. But she definitely tries to hyperventilate and doesn't cry. I made myself a little hyperventilating doing my impression of her. Uh, and then next we have, it is not a tell-all. It is the one-on-one. -on -one. I heard that there are four of them. I can either confirm or deny that we watched on Max and it didn't say four anything about it. Four of what? And it's just me and a lot of Cody talking about how everybody's so disrespectful to him while he absolutely says the most offensive things you've they ever really heard. They really missed an opportunity. They should have had Bill O'Reilly host it and he could have said something like, welcome to the spin zone and then let Cody talk. Because that's all it's going to be. I mean... I don't know that... I mean, there's a lot of theories on what would make it better. I think the only thing that could really make it better... I'm not saying it would make it better. I don't like Bill O'Reilly, but at least that would fit. 
I mean, the thing I would like is for them to actually tell Cody he has to answer and to get good clips and to ask good questions. What would be awesome. To change fundamentally everything about is it. Is do all the questions and every time he doesn't answer, say roll the clips and at the end of it be like, because you didn't answer and you've been with us for however many hours, we've had our TLC's uh, forensic accountant go through all your stuff and here's what we've come up with. A lot of people have thought it would be better if they had all four in the room and I bet you you would for sure see the same Robin who who uh, uh, shuts shuts a job. Kobe up. Shuts who, Cody up. Yeah, shuts Co Cody up. You see the same Robin who shouted and cursed when she got out of the RV and it was cold. Um, the same Robin who snaps and and it's gonna be bad. The same dog kicking Robin. So um, yeah, we'll so, still be here. We'll see it. you next week if you're still interested. So uh, thank you for joining us once again. Uh, you can join our Patreon or not. It's up to you. You can grab my books anywhere that books are sold. Nikki or the Haverstock, free one. Or the free audio book. I'll, I'll link it below. Um, and enjoy your week. Bye. You can join us for our 90-day stuff. Yes. Come back for 90 days.